costume. My name is Rhea and I am the Blue Coast Stitcher. And welcome to my cozy little quiet corner of the floss tube world where I share my joy that is the magic of cross stitch. Have a cup of tea. In my appropriate mug for spring. I just love this one. Of course, my window's not is reflecting in there. It's a beautiful sunny day. Today is Monday, April 15th, 2024. And this is floss tube number, I think it's six. Yes, it's number six. It's been a while since I last um, made a floss tube. Not a lot of stitching's been going on. Life. Um... I had to renew my associations for, I'm a holistic nutritionist. Um, and I had to renew, I have two associations I'm a member of and I had to renew them. And then in order to renew them, you need continuing education units, which I fulfilled, but then I had to make a few tweaks anyways. So I was doing that. And then I had a client that has possible PCOS, which was kind of out of my wheelhouse when it comes to nutrition, but not because PCOS, cause I'm more metabolic disorders. So like insulin resistance, diabetes, um, that kind of thing. And so PCS, PCOS is kind of out of my wheelhouse, but once I dove into the research, it's like, oh, it is a metabolic disorder, which unfortunately most chronic diseases in today's modern Western society is. But I was fascinated when I dived down into the history and how long, like PCOS is something we've just been hearing about recently, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I should clarify for those who do not understand what I'm saying. It's a very common um, disorder amongst women and they know it affects all races and cultures, ethnicities, which means it's been around for a good 50,000 plus years when our ancestors were hunter gatherers. So, but it served those people well. And then fast forward where our genetics haven't caught up to today's unfortunately very toxic 24 seven food cycle. And so now we got PCOS, which served our hunter gatherer female ancestors quite well, but in today's world, not so much. So anyways, so I had to dive into that and then was the eclipse on April 8th, the Monday. So Dave and I left Saturday, April 6th for Niagara on the Lake, um, which is close to Niagara Falls. So we booked our hotel about a year ago, almost a year ago. It was like last May. This is when we we're still in the old house. And I, the thought of moving wasn't even on our radar at this point. We were talking about a few years down the road and um, take a tea. So we booked it and of course, they, you know, tons of room because the eclipse wasn't on too many people's radar at the time. My husband being an amateur astrophotographer or astronomer, it had been on his radar for a couple of years. And we had been to the eclipse that was in August 21st, 2017. And we were down the Isle of Palms, South Carolina, with all three kids. And uh, that was also, my birthday's also August 21st. So that was a very magical day. And so this year, 2024, it was April 8th. And my husband's birthday, Dave, is April 6th. So we left and drove down. Now we live even further because we're now way down on the Blue Coast, just outside of Sarnia, Ontario. And before we were in the Kitchener-Waterloo area, so driving to Niagara Falls, niagara on the lake niagara on the lake is much nicer than the falls. I'm not a fan of the falls. Um, it's just too tacky tourist. That's just me. Some people love it. Eh. Anyways, so for us to go to niagara on the lake it used to be not a big deal. An hour, hour and a half, and you're there. But now we're way the heck down by... Sarnia, so it's, it was a bit more of a, a, a drive, but it was a beautiful day. It was my husband's birthday. Um, we were a little bit worried about traffic, but from what we understood, most of the traffic was going to be Sunday, Monday. Um, Niagara region, so Niagara on the lake, Niagara Falls, and then you've got the Niagara region, 
had declared a state of emergency because of the unprecedented numbers of people that were going to be specifically in the in the falls area for the eclipse on april the 8th and so i'm kind of glad we did niagara on the lake because there wasn't as many crowds it was still a little more busier than normal for this time of year because it's still technically the off season because it's early april um so it was a beautiful drive we had a really nice uh dinner overlooking the uh niagara river and when you're at Niagara on the Lake, Niagara Falls, you understand Canada and the U.S. were very close to each other. And Niagara on the Lake is a town that's very pivotal in history. Um, when you think of Laura Secord, um, the War of 1812. So we're sitting at dinner and you can look across the river and then there's, on the American side, Fort Niagara, I believe, which is where the river empties into Lake Ontario. You can look across the lake and see... Um, the skyline of Toronto, um, so that's technically New York across the river, we're in Niagara on the lake on the Canadian side, and um, there was quite a few Americans actually that were staying in, in the Niagara region as well. We saw Georgia, Arizona, New York State of course, Texas, Michigan, Illinois, New Hampshire, Maine, so it was, I would say in tourists, it was half Canadian, half American. And Niagara on the Lake is such a beautiful town. It's very historic and it doesn't attract the same tacky tourist kind of things that you find at Niagara Falls, which is all fun to visit once in a while, but oh well, it's just me, right? And then apparently I'm glad we didn't because apparently there was some hotels in Niagara, on the, Niagara Falls that it made the news here because there were some people that booked hotel rooms like we did a year ago. And um, people started getting wind that the eclipse was there. And so then all these people were really wanting to go see the eclipse. And Niagara Falls, Niagara on the lake was in the path of totality. It's a beautiful area. It's, it's um, Ontario's wine country because it's a very temperate climate. And some hotels canceled reservations that were made back in April and May 2023 and it turns out they were flipping them so they were say you made a reservation for 120 Canadian a night and then they would cancel that reservation and then they would charge like a thousand two thousand dollars a night for the same room to somebody else and then I guess there was an Airbnb in Niagara Falls my husband said he was hilarious that one guy paid $11,000 Canadian a night to stay at this Airbnb at Niagara Falls for the eclipse. My husband loves the eclipse. He's an astronomer, but thank God he's not like that. So anyways, we stayed at the Queen's Landing, which is right along the um, river, overlooks the um, marina. There's a marina there and overlooks the side. So we stayed there, which was part of the vintage hotel chain which is a good part of Niagara on the lake. And um, beautiful stay there. I, had a, I booked a beautiful room overlooking the uh, marina and the river. And same with the uh, dining room at the Tiara restaurant was beautiful. It was where we had our breakfasts. We had two dinners there. Um, the nice thing about staying in a vintage hotel in Niagara on the lake, because basically when we checked in, they said, park your car, Here's a slip of paper, put it in your windshield so we know that you're an actual guest of the hotel and don't drive anywhere this weekend because it's gonna be insane. So we had to walk and we had booked for Sunday night's dinner at Pillar and Post, which is a fair bit of a walk from Queen's Landing to Pillar and Post to their cannery restaurant. And we toyed with the idea of possibly walking because it was such beautiful weather, like not a cloud in the sky. This is where it gets interesting for Saturday and Sunday. So Sunday we were walking and keep in mind, I had injured my lower back a few days earlier and I was still having problems with spasms. And the more I walked, the better it got, but it's still, I had to be careful. So thankfully with the vintage hotel chain within Niagara on the Lake, which is just gorgeous, they have shuttle. 
So a free shuttle for all their guests and they can take you to any one of their hotels. They'll take you to anywhere. They can take you to, they'll drop you off somewhere within Niagara on the Lake if you're at dinner at a different restaurant and you just call their number. So we were able to take a shuttle from Queen's Landing to Pillar and Post and then Pillar and Post arranged us to get back to Queen's Landing after dinner and it was stunning. It was beautiful and we didn't eat much for dinner that night because, well, we were wandering Niagara on the lake downtown. It's beautiful, historical. And it was busy. It was really busy. And um, Prince of Wales, which is another hotel part of the chain. We stayed there before. And each hotel has their own aesthetic. And Prince of Wales has that Victorian opulence aesthetic. And they do an afternoon tea, different levels. And we were kind of peckish. We said, oh, let's just do an app. Let's see. Doesn't hurt to see, because we don't have reservations. Let's see. And they said, "Oh yeah, we got a table for two. And they put us in a table for two, um, in their little glass atrium area overlooking the main sidewalk and the main road. And you can look across the street at the park. So we did that, um, which is quite filling because you get your sandwiches, you've got your tea, you've got your cookies and your cakes, and of course your scone with cl clotted cream and jam. But it was so good. Um, but we also did a lot of walking. Um, like I said, I had hurt my back and walking does help because you got to get those muscles. Cause if I s stop the muscle spasm and it just, anyways, rest, but walk. So that's what I was doing. And we also went to Fort George that day, which is, um, a fort kind of across and down the river from the American fort. In the, in the war of 1812, they would fire cannon because they were the right distance to fire cannons right so it's it's a reconstructed um because it was briefly captured by the americans during the war of 1812 for about six months and uh, americans had to surrender and retreat back to uh the other side of the river new york um and it's funny because the one thing we learned, because when I think about the war, you hear about the War of 1812, like here is part of our curriculum in school. You learn about the War of 1812. And especially all along Lake Ontario, like Niagara region is a key in terms of all the different battles that occurred. Um, you hear stories how we went to the States, burnt down the White House in retaliation. And, you know, it's just interesting bit of history and then uh, talk about how many British troops were here in Canada for the War of 1812. And we kind of think of an isolated War of 1812 here in Canada. We're not looking at what's going on in the grander scope of the world history at that time. And so the British weren't able to dedicate as many troops as they normally could to the War of 1812 because they were busy with Napoleon. So it's like, oh yeah, so that, you know, things, little reminders of that, right? And um, how the everyday citizens and our treaty with the indigenous people were key in uh, defending Canada from the Americans. Sorry, my American friends, my husband's American too. It was just the time period. And uh, learning about life in that time period and how Niagara on the Lake was burnt down when the Americans retreated and how it caused outrage on both the Canadian and American side of the border in terms of how this occurred because that's, you know, very much against the war code of ethics. Of course, you don't, and it was in, the, in a, a snowstorm, apparently it was December and it was a snowstorm and they burnt half the, most of the town down, which explains why a lot of the buildings are like 1820s, the old ones. So anyways, so that was fascinating. And then we had two gorgeous, like Saturday, Sunday, sunshine. Not a cloud in the sky. We woke up Monday. Dark clouds. Thick clouds. It was overcast. Um, we had chosen for our viewing. Um, there's a huge open area just outside of Fort George, which was just like basically you walk out of Queens Landing, you walk down the street and you're at Fort George. And the fort was closed because, again, it's off-season, so they're only, they had just opened that weekend for the first time for the season, and they don't really open full-time till around the May 2-4 weekend here. Um, that's when, because they use a lot of university and college students to staff and as interpreters for their 
uh, facility. But outside the fort is a huge grassy area, open field. So that's where we chose to do our viewing. Um, after breakfast, we did stroll into Niagara on the Lake and it was a little bit busier, the parks, because there was a lot of families. Um, a lot of school boards had closed down in our area for the eclipse. So there was a lot of families and of course they chose the parks to hang out for the day overlooking the river. And um, so that was quite busy and you could see people pulling up trying to get things lined up of where they're going to do their viewing in the parks in and around that core of Niagara on the Lake. So we went back to the hotel for they had a special lunch for us. Um, so we didn't have to worry about trying to find lunch. And um, then we went out to Fort George, but it was so overcast. There was, it was a field that could hold hundreds of thousands of people and there was maybe a hundred people. Like it was, there was hardly anybody. And we thought, well, I wonder what Niagara Falls is. Cause we think the clouds kept a lot of people away. And um, so having seen an eclipse before, I kind of knew what to expect. Um, it was a little sunnier in South Carolina on August 21st, 2017, than it was in Niagara on the Lake, April 8th, 2024. Anyways, so we just kind of walked along some of the trails and I was like, okay, the eclipse is starting to happen. And even though we couldn't see the sun because the clouds were so thick, the light of course changes as the moon starts to move across the sun. And it kind of reminded, because it was kind of a colder day, because it was so cloudy. Um, and just, and it's still early spring here, so the trees are bare. So I said to Dave, I said, it kind of reminds me, as we're at the end of the day, like November, December here, where it gets dark really early, and it's just cold, and it's dreary, and it's just, yeah, it just, the, the, the light was looking kind of murky, right, which goes with the eclipse. And then we went back to the Fort George field with every, where everybody else was with their some people had cameras and some people had um with their special filters over the lens to try and capture it but unfortunately we couldn't do the whole the full eclipse with the sun we had our glasses at the ready but we didn't need them because we couldn't there was no sun to look at but um what i find with the eclipse it's just this magical time especially when you come into totality. Um, as we were reaching totality, it's getting darker, but then there's still light all around you because it's still technically daytime. But the wildlife, like the ro right now the robins are back and the robins started their evening song. And the best way I can describe it for myself as I experienced the eclipse, as I experienced it back in South Carolina and then again here at Niagara on the Lake, it's almost like Mother Nature holds her breath for that two to three minutes of how long that totality lasts. It's almost like everything just, it just freezes. It's magical. The, it's dark, but not nighttime dark, not sunset dark. It's a very twi twilight dark is the best way to describe it. And there's this, this magic to it where it feels like all of nature is just holding her breath. And then as the moon continues to move and the sunlight becomes brighter again, then it's just like breathe. And then the animals start, you can start hearing the animals, the birds singing again and slowly but surely the regular daylight comes about and so it was fascinating to be able to experience that again um the next total solar eclipse i think is 20 26 so my husband was talking about it. i said well i don't know what's going on in my life in 2026 but and then that means we have to go overseas because it varies. But anyways, it was absolutely wonderful. So that was our big trip. And we've got more big trips coming up, of course. But for now, the eclipse was the big experience. Now, um, this video is going to be a little more choppy, not choppy, different because I don't have a lot of cross-stitching to show. But I do have 
my craft room. I got my craft room set up. I did a sh little video of a craft room tour so you can see it and I will insert it um, right about here so you can see what it is that I've done. I'm really happy with it. I'm really pleased and it's bigger than what I had before. It actually has a window before it was a windowless room and I somebody I need window I need light that's just who I am and so I'm really happy with that and enjoy my little craft room tour right here. Okay, I know some people have asked and life's been busy, but here is my craft room tour. So when we come down the stairs, we're gonna see this wall of bookcases and then we've got a unit there and a unit there. And then there's the bulkhead that the bookcases are, head, are attached to, I should say. So this is what's separating my space from the rest of the basement because this is just one incredibly huge um, open space down here. Uh, we are currently in a bungalow, so usually with bungalows, it's bigger basements. So anyways, this is the family bookshelf. All the photos that we found, all the scrapbooks that I've created so far. And then we've got, oops, scrapbook page I created back in the day when I sold Creative Memories. Those are my two little girls. Laura's the one in red, and she's currently in England, just finishing up her PhD. Amanda is in the Teletubbies, and she is finishing up her master's at U of T. I think, yeah, this is um, Christmas 1999, so I was pregnant with Daniel. Oh, it was so cute. What happened to my babies? Anyways, sorry. <laughs> Excuse the mess. We're still not done sorted. So then you come around this way to my space. This is my cabinet. Just some books, odds and ends, my altar pieces, my Cricut Press is down there. Athena's going to make her announce her appearance. Hello, Athena. Cat toys. This has been as long as around as long as I can remember. My dad picked it up. It is actually um, from World War II, a bullet shell. Oh, so after the war, my parents are from the Netherlands, after the war, these empty shell casings. And I believe this is from the Allied Forces because everything's in English. Um, we're everywhere. And so we've used it as an umbrella stand. Now it's for cat toys and my husband's back scratcher. And I used to sell creative memories, so there's bits and pieces. Anyways, so yeah, that's kind of a piece of history there. And yeah. My dad picked one up because they were all over the area. Back to this is my space. I have not packed for Stitch North yet, so I figured now's the time because it's not complete and utter chaos at this point in time. So we have the windows in our basement are quite large and this is west facing so we get some nice, nice light. Today's kind of a sucky rainy day, but Nice, especially the afternoon light because it's west west facing. So the family room with the TV, home theaters on the other side of this. So we got these from Ikea. Most of this is going to be Ikea. These are room dividers um, so that I still have my privacy, but then the light from the window behind me can still come to the main family room area where we have the, the big screen TV, the surround sound and all that. So, um, let's show the other side of the bookcases. So this is my bookcases on my side and then a little something I made way back when in the day when I sold Stampin' Up! I have been a little bit of everything. And this was my office when I lived in, when we lived in Air, and then I had an office in Drumble that my business owned was this house. This is a picture from the 1870s, and that was the cobbler that the, the building was built for, called George Harrison. And so that was a little piece of the history of a property I owned. I love it. My first... Ah, oh, glare! 
cross stitch piece, some of my art journals and books. Um, Dave's family does china painting, so I have a few. We have a complete set of dishes, but then I've got some odds and ends such as this. Which I think I've got some needles in there. And then cabinets that just store odds and ends. Like I said, I used to be a paper crafter. I don't want to get back. More journals. I am a journal junkie. But these are my definite art journals, cross stitch books, my stamping tin magazines and journal books such as Belle Grace. Um, what's in here? Watercolors. These are really nice watercolors. My brushes. I just, it holds so much. My mixed media, which I want to get back into. But see, there's still space. Pieces in too. Oops, sorry. Um, stamp sets that I decided to keep. Something else I created. I want to learn knitting, so there's some knitting stuff up there. I'm a gardener. My needle minders. Some clay Duma flickies that my kids made when they were little. More stamps. Yeah, those are just loose stamps. These are just different books for my craft. And then this is more mixed media bits and pieces, such as my Xyron, an extra cauldron, things like that. And then this is more of my some business books and all my Oracle and Tarot cards. Yes, I collect Oracle and Tarot cards. Been doing it for years. And these are the ones that are just in storage. So there's more space. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Just some binders. This is also a Ikea. This was in the old place. And it's just one of those. I think it was originally designed for a very small kitchen. So the two table, it can, this comes up just like that. So it's one big long table for now. My sewing machine's on there. I chose the sewing machine and then I realized the outlet is <laughs> on the other side of this tower. This is a tower that my in-laws used to own a scrapbook store. And uh, this was one of their display pieces. And right now, so we got my sewing machine. I'm not a huge sewer. And there's Athena again. She's feeling, oh, okay. <laughs> Ignored and she's making her presence known. Washi tape, all my punches, bits and bobs for my scrapbooking. What else do I got back here? Do you remember these guys? Do drops if you were into scrapbooking. Um, scissors, my button jars, all kinds of punches, gemstones, just odds and ends. There's even, there's so much space. Okay, so we swing around. And this is new Ikea desk with drawers, my desktop. You can see we're in the basement. That rose was the last rose I bought my mom. She was in hospital for the last year of her life. And so we couldn't give her real flowers for Valentine's Day. So I bought her a single red rose and I kept it after she passed. My collection, some of the stuff that I've made over the years. Um, company in uh, St. Jacobs, Ontario made Harry Potter one, so of course I had to get it. And it says, I have decided that no longer, that I no longer want to be an adult. If anyone needs me, I'm in my fort, blanket fort coloring. So yeah. And then magic happens to those who believe in the fairies. So yeah, most of the drawers are still empty. So I had to pack up my desktop for when we had the house staged back in early end of July, beginning of August. And for some reason, Safari is not allowing me to open all websites. It's only opening some things like YouTube. And one of the things is not opening because I have my Cricut over there. This was an old filing cabinet that we had in Dave's old office. I can't get my Cricut app to open. So that's something I've been working on problem solving. It's kind of frustrating. There is my 
cross stitch floss extra needles again i still have so much room these are pegboards from ikea i absolutely love them scroll rods and other components of a scroll roll system i was going to try this houses paints and sponges for mixed media this table i've had forever it's just a nine foot table and i've put it on bed risers so that the table is um higher for me so i don't have a sore back i'm not i'm fairly tall i've got long legs so and there's isabella's heart and oops i should close that <laughs> Oops, sorry. Sorry, Lindy. But, and then my next 2024 start is in here. Extra light, my big shot, the carousel that has all my bits and pieces. This is a Q-snap floor stand holder that I have yet to put together. <sighs> Rolly cart that I got from Staples. It was in my old office. When I went to the building, it just carries like stamp cleaner, some creative memories, paper trimmer, that kind of odds, odds and ends, some bits and pieces like gemstones for my scrapbooking, mixed media. So, and then that's just odds and ends of um, embellishments and everything. I've got a fair bit still. So now we have the armoire that I've always had because I want it at the Paris scrapbook store and then what we got is two calyx units and we put um, the inserts for paper so this is my cardstock there's my pattern paper there's still plenty of slots left over and then my 24 starts for 2024 and one and two and then there's just other um, kitted projects that are scattered throughout these other four bins my cross stitch magazines, tons of different card stock, some that I've used for printing, more embellishments, flowers, big shot dies, adhesives, my ribbon racks, I've always had these, and then there's another set over there. And this is my pattern paper, the different sizes, more big shot embossing folders and dies, etc. Magazines. Um, in here, try not to be too messy. More um, cutting tools. So this was like um, paper, uh, stitching on paper, that kind of thing. It's just odds and ends are in there. And then we have two of the identical units. Um, fell in love with these. I can step back. Sorry, I'm a terrible film, film camera operator. So, I think I can make it zoom out. Oh, there we go. Things that I learned. Oh, and my crafting aprons are back there on the wall. So this, we got two cabinets. This one here, and then there's another one right here beside me. So this is my cross stitch one. And you can tell there's fabric kitted projects more fabric cross stitch linen and just fabric i want to learn how to do finishing of my cross stitch projects so yeah and then just more fabric odds and ends things that i picked up thread beds i made this in uh, the Creative Needle Work Festival in Toronto, like ages ago, I think it was the Janome booth. Boop! I have a few kitted projects and unkitted. And then there's more. This is where my Q snaps, floss away bags. I'm really liking the floss away bags. And my hoops, which I'm not using as much, so I might have to purge them, but I definitely like my Q snaps that and then those are projects for cross stitch that are partially kitted that I have to finish and in here this is just an old filing cabinet Ugh. so you will see 
These are patterns that need kitting. Those are PDFs that I've printed from like the um, Jingle Bell Ball, etc. Another one of the pegboards, this time with all my Cricut mats, um, my Creative Memories cutting system, extra Cricut blades, the Cricut um, fabric cutting um, ruler templates, markers for the Cricut. So there's that. And I think this top drawer, yeah, it has just Creative Memories cutting mat. And then all the little things from the cross stitch magazines that I get. So here's number two cabinet. And this is more scrapbooking related. So there's more embossing powders, uh, folders, I should say. Um, odds and end ribbon, my crocodile, uh, project life books, that's just empty, gifts that people gave me. What else is in here? I am a terrible camera operator. More cutting tools. I am a paper trimmer fanatic. Extra spools of ribbon. More, and that's pretty much empty. Isn't that one? That one's in this one. So the seat I have still. That's what I love about this room. I still have room. So I have created a room that I still have space for things. And it holds so much so much so this is my new space that i am so 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 happy with um my sewing machine works that survived the move and then there's embossing powders back there there's like a little um ikea bucket full of embossing powders so unfortunately some of my ink pads had dried out because i hadn't done it in years and i really want to get back into scrapbooking mixed media so yeah, and then here we can sneaky boo so we can go through. There's another box I have to go through. But yeah, this is my craft space that I'm very, very happy with. So much. And then there's other odds and ends in these bins too. And then because we're on carpet and I want to get back into mixed media and I'm a bit of a, the paint goes flying. So we just picked up, we had this kicking around. It's just a paint drop cloth so that when I do do my mixed media and I'm in playing with the paints and whatnot, I can just lay that on the floor and protect the carpet because the house came with wall-to-wall -wall carpeting down here, which I'm not overly fond of because it's a basement, but oh well. Anyways, yeah. And then Isabel's heart will get done eventually. Let me step back over here. So yeah, my craft room and my witch's hat is up there. Confession, the box for the Evertotes, Jacob Modern Fark Embroidery, Valentine's Day stitch along is up there. I've opened the box. I videotaped what was in the box. And that's about all I did. <laughs> so yeah. And then of course, this just holds more stuff. My chalks, my markers. Glue gun, ribbon, tape. Whoop. I have lanterns everywhere because, yeah. Pencil, crayons, watercolor pencils, bajillion adhesives. So all kinds of stuff. And then the bottom is just a hodgepodge of whatever. I love this armoire. So there. Hopefully I didn't make you too dizzy. I'm sorry if I did. It's a skill that I have not mastered to be able to film while walking at the same time. So yeah, thank you for coming into my craft studio. Hi, this is Rhea again. This is future Rhea. So new outfit, it's Tuesday, end of the day. I'm a little tired 
and I'm putting the uh, video together to post to YouTube and I realize a short clip is missing. Um, this is a different floss tube, so instead of one long rambling, it's a little series of video clips that I had made throughout the week. And I filmed yesterday, and then today is Tuesday evening, and I'm trying to put everything together, and I realized there's a video clip missing. And that is the one where I'm discussing, I only have one whip. And that whip is the peacock, badger, and unicorn. Or is it unicorn? I don't have it here with me. <laughs> Anyways, I can never remember the name of the title. Unicorn and Peacock with the Roxy Floss Co. and Evertote Floss Conversion and the Pub Crawl um, 36 count linen. So I'm going to show you my whip and I have a question in regards to it because I'm having an issue with the 36 count. So this is just a brief interlude. Um, I will insert the clip of my whip and my question about 36 count stitching that I have for to pick the brilliant brains that is the cross stitch community and I will insert that here. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. All right so here is my focal point whip that I have been working on when I can since leap day, leap year, leap day, February 29th. And uh, this was my leap year BAP start. And it's a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger by Scarlet Letter. I am stitching on 36 count pub crawl by Roxy Floss Co. and Evertote with the Roxy Floss Co. and Evertote floss conversion. This is my first time stitching on 36 count. I'm doing two over two. Um, it is a darker fabric, of course, and now with the way the lighting is, it's my hearth side, also my hearth side craft um, floor stand, which I absolutely love. Um, and I know if I zoom in, the lighting gets all skewed, but anyways, what I'm finding with the 36 count, first it took my eyes a bit to adjust. I do have a magnifier with a light um, to see the holes. Um, but the one thing that I'm noticing, and I don't know if it's just me or if this is something that goes with doing two over two on 36 count, is that I'm not thrilled with all of the X's, the way the threads lie. It looks, it's not a smooth X. I'm not sure how to describe it. It looks, it can look kind of hodgepodgey. I don't know if I can zoom in. Uh, it's distorting, but anyways. Um, I'm trying to guide my thread properly so I get that smooth, clean X for each um, stitch. I'm also ordered a laying tool, hoping that might help get my X's, my cross stitches, my X stitches a little more even and smooth. Um, some of the X's I find the top stitch is like higher up the square than the bottom stitch. So it kind of looks, it doesn't look neat and polished is the best way to describe it for me. So if you guys can tell me, is there a technique? Like I said, I ordered a laying tool. Um, I will probably be setting this project aside because I am behind my 24 starts for 2024. And um, as I told you my life update, things have been a bit busy so this has been my focal point because it's on the lap stand there's my stitching chair where i can just pull it up bring my magnifier light around and just stitch a few stitches be it half an hour or an hour and unfortunately i can't stitch every day so that's been a bit frustrating for me this month month of march and now it's mid-april anyways I have to finish another, I have to start some other starts. And I got Stitch North I'm prepping for because it's Monday and I'm leaving Thursday for a weekend one. And I'm really excited. So that is my question of the day. For 36 count, two over two, how do you get your crosses to look very neat and tidy? Whereas opposed mine, some of mine are looking rather sloppy. Welcome back. 
do that. I hope you can give me some ideas and tips on what I'm doing wrong with my crosses when it comes to 36 count 2 over 2. I'm new at that. Anyways, yeah, this is one of those videos, Floss 2 videos, where there's going to be other little videos interspersed just because of the nature of what's been going on in my world. So, there's my current whip. In terms of haul, I really don't have too much scrapbook, uh, scrapbook cross stitch haul. Um, I'm going to Stitch North weekend one coming up this Thursday. I'm leaving and I'm saving my pennies because it's Stitch North. There's a market. I did purchase Caroline's Stitch Along for her birthday, which is July. Yes, because it's after we get back from England. So... I did purchase that, but of course that doesn't get delivered till later. Um, I purchased the Stitch North um, exclusive kit as well, which I will pick up when I get there. Um, I did, I will give a bit of a haul that I got at Niagara on the Lake. Um, if you ever been, it's just this beautiful historic town town. It's got some really cute shops and I purchased some items at two shops. Um, let me see what we got. So let's do the Upper Canada Native Art Shop. One second, please. So I try to support Indigenous artisans and artisans in general, but Indigenous just to help them, not help them regain their, their footing in what after we did with colonization as a culture as a white western european culture anyways and some of their artisans they're just like so incredibly talented and so there was a store called upper canada native art and they had stunning stunning um soapstone sculptures from all over canada and they had a few things from um companies that i've really enjoyed some of their products one was um mother earth i'm a tea drinker so this was their restore tea which has hibiscus petals apple elderberry and currant pieces blueberry blueberries cornflower petals in it so i purchased some of that um this is sequoia soaps i've used their soaps before and i really like handmade soaps and so i got two of those i got oops upside down wildberries Focus. I don't know how well this is focusing. And Storyteller. It's a beautiful soap. That's what I use in my shower. I mean, I'm focusing because it's my face. Um, I got a scrunchie from, and this was new to me, Dene Fur Clouds out of Northwest Territories. Um, it's beaver fur, so my cats are all over it. Now, this is somebody I knew, I their products Loftan. Um, I was introduced to them through um, Asha Frost, who is an indigenous medicine woman that I have um, worked with, joined in her women's circles, worked with her one-on-one -on -one, um, for spiritual mentoring, etc. And she introduced me to some of their handmade jewelry pieces. And there was a bracelet and earrings that absolutely fell in love with this is that beautiful dark blue and then earrings to match and it's not focusing so and then last but not least um this was an artist dave and i came across back in the 1990s we purchased two of her prints, Betty Alberts, her name, and she's from northern, further north, I think Timmins or something like that. And so they carry some of her pieces and I just picked up a couple of, because I have um, an old house, our fridge had, oops, built-ins with cabinet paneling, so I couldn't do magnets. Now I've got a stainless steel fridge that allows for magnets so I want to get some pretty magnets so I got this one I love her art come on focus it is so confused and there's a glare I'm sorry and then back in 2020 
when they were um, discovering all the children's bodies at the different residential schools. And Betty Albert created a piece of art. And then I purchased, and then she made a series of, like she made an original piece of art, and then of course they make prints, um, a certain set of prints, number of prints, and then um, every print that you purchase, the proceeds went to the search for um, residential, for, for all the bodies that got buried and forgotten at all the different residential schools where some horrific, horrific, I cannot imagine, um, acts occurred against these children for the very nature of them being native to Canada and not Christian. Anyway, so they have a magnet. I have, I have the actual print artwork framed. It's in my bedroom, but then I bought the magnet. So this is the, this is the artwork she made. And of course, I'm sorry about the glare. I really, truly am mother and child. And, um, and it's every child matters, which you will see, at least here in Ontario, um, in certain areas, everywhere. Um, we have two reservations, one south of here and one further northeast. And um, so we see the flags everywhere. And um, it's quite heartbreaking at how many they are finding. And unmarked graves and so yeah so the money of the, that artwork went towards that and also to help take those bones and um give them proper interment with the ceremony of their people which is what should you know it should never have happened to begin with and treating these small little beings like they did so I would like, yeah, so I'm trying to support where I can, when I can. So there's that. And then there's a cute tea shop there called Victoria, Victoria Teas. And so I bought, I'm, I don't drink coffee. I'm, oh, actually, it gives me migraines coffee. So I picked up, I give them, I'm always trying teas, right? So I got the Mother Earth herbal tea. And so then I got two greens. I got their English breakfast. <laughs> and these are in bags. And then I like my green tea. So this is Sencha Cherry Rose Tea, which is, you know, I opened and smelled as soon as I got home. Come on, there we go. That is just amazing, so good. And then this one, I know it's spring, it reminds me of fall, but it's green apple spice. And oh, 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 oh it's beautiful green tea. It was a nice tea in the morning. And then for herb, herbal tea, I got the linden petals. And um, that is a really nice light herbal tea for evening. So I got that. And of course, got tea towels. I have a thing for tea towels. Maybe it's because I'm Dutch. I don't know. But it's just this gorgeous blue. I love the topiary, the flower. It looks like a French country. And then ticking and then I have a teapot and I remember I got tea cozy and it's been hard to find something like this um my mom used to have them and then they had a few and they said it's from where's it from it's someplace in Victoria honeysuckle cottage so there's a lady out in BC that makes these of course because I'm the crazy cat lady I got cats and I got a nice little tea cozy from a teapot I'm really excited about that because it was hard to find. My mom had some because back in the 70s, you could find them everywhere. And now you don't don't really find them. And uh, I said, oh, yeah. And they even mentioned this, that it's hard to find people that make them. They used to have a lady closer to the Niagara region that made them. But then she retired. So then they found this person out in BC, a seamstress that does that. And they had some beautiful tea cozy. So I got that. Now, in terms of cross-stitch haul... Um, I am a part of the um, Roxy and Evertote thread um, club, so once a month. So I have March and April's threads. So I have the March 2024 brights. So and that's what these are. Gourd vibes only. Tootie fruity. Hitting snooze. Oh, that was me this morning. In a jam. Oh, 
and grape, grape expectations. I love some of the names Carrie thinks of. Pretty purple. So that's March Brights, March Neutrals. We have C for Yourself. Hopefully this shows up for you. I'm sorry, I apologize if it doesn't. It's almost like a blue-gray. Oh, I have ideas for that. Nature Walk. Sorry. Sherwood, which is like a dark green. I got an idea. All right, there we go. Oh, that's better. Sherwood. Baklava. And crooked. There we go. That shows better. So that's March. And then April's brights. We have kiss and oops. Kiss and tell. Gorgeous variegated pink. Croquet. Croquette. Croquet. However you say it. Nice pink. Dried lavender. I see a purple theme. Lilac fields. Hopefully this is... Okay. And regalia. I'm new to this whole filming thing. Is it showing? I have to peek around. Is it focused? And that's the April brights. And then the April neutrals. Thorn this way. I hope it's focusing. Why if I stick my face in and the camera's like, what? Teal of the day. So yeah, it's a beautiful teal color. Ooh, this is another gorgeous blue-gray pond stone. It's almost like river rock. Hemlock. And you can imagine it's got a green to it. And Black Forest. Ooh, black with some green. It's not going to show, of course, the variegation on that. So, awesome. so I did, I got that. Um, the next pattern of the Lindy Stitches Endangered Species Club, Endangered Species Club arrived. And it was the African Savannah Elephant. And it has some specialty stitches. Over there. Great way to try that. And then it came with Classic Colorworks Thundercloud. Weeks Dye Works Graphite. Cape Cod. Oh, and that's graphite. Two, two skeins of graphite. And Cape Cod from Weeks Dye Works. And that is what came for that and then this morning because i was i was going through my emails i got an email from tiny modernist and she released um today the sign up for her sweet summer three-part mystery sow called sweet summer basically you know how it goes with her right so this is what I signed up and of course part one got not delivered yet because part one is released May 1st part two June 1st part three July 1st and it says it's a three-part series which is a cute summer design featuring colorful scenes with fruit flowers beach motifs flamingos and more so and then there's a pattern. We did get the pattern because it was free PDF of the border. So there's no PDF there with this one, but you can see the border. So I did get the PDF for this and then the materials, which is basically which I like about um, Tiny Modernist is DMC and telling you exactly how many skeins you have. And then um, she stitched hers on 28 count linen in tiny modernist dark stone from Fabric Flare. I've never ordered from Fabric Flare. I don't know if I will. I'm going to order the DMC floss for this and the two Lindy stitches probably from 
one, two, three stitch, or I'll just go down to, if I do Costco in London, I can do stitch at central. Uh, but when? I don't know. On the way back from stitch north, I am so close to stitch at central. There's a thought. So anyways, I did sign up for that and printed the border PDF and this is just the welcome package telling you what you need, what the stitch count is, that kind of thing, right? So, sweet summer three-part mystery cell. I've never done one of her mystery cells in real time, so. And I just love her bright, happy colors. So that is my stitchy and non-stitchy haul. Um, again, I am going to stitch north. It is Monday right now, and depending on how my um, video uploading, I find going from phone, getting into my laptop for editing and stitching, it can take a bit for some reason. Um, I'm new at this technology stuff. Um, so there's that. Um, I am today right after I get off of this I'm probably gonna go for a walk because it's freaking awesome out there I did my yoga this morning I'm gonna go for a walk and we'll head down to the beach and then I'm going to pack my stitch north kit and so what I might do um <laughs> add another video to this is do a, a little video of what I'm taking in my stitch north kit for the weekend in terms of the whips I'm taking and any other like tools and accessories that I'll be taking with me that I find I need for Stitch North. And then hopefully it won't be as long between this video and the next one because I'm gonna have lots to tell in a week or two about my Stitch North experience. Um, I'm really bad at remembering to videotape things when I'm at a situation like this. But we'll see, I might do a haul video in the room each night because I usually pick up a few things for the Friday, pick up a few things Saturday, and then Sunday is just the wrap, wrap up things. Um, so I will probably do that. I think I will. I think um, I'm not gonna end end this particular floss tube right here. I am going to gather what I'm taking with me to Stitch North, get it all packaged up and ready to go, and then kind of do a short video of what I take to a retreat. Um, this will be my fourth retreat that I've gone to in my life. So I've never really been to retreats till the first Stitch North in 2022. And um, I learned some lessons there. And then 2023, I did Stitch North. And then Jacob Palooza last October. And now I'm doing Stitch North this week. So I've kind of got it kind of refined. Again, it's something that's always evolving and changing as I learn and tweak and figure out what works and doesn't work and um, try to overcome my strong tendency to overpack. That's just who I am. So... I will not end this floss tube right here. I will probably insert the next phase, which is what I am taking to Stitch North in my Stitch North kit. See you in two seconds. All right, I'm back. Thank you for your patience, even though in YouTube floss tube world, it was like a fraction of a second. But for me, it was about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I put the craft room together and then I couldn't remember where I put some of my stuff. But it came back to me and it came back to me quickly. So, Stitch North Retreat Kit. This, again, Betty Albert is my tote bag. Here we go. And then I also have this. So this is what I usually come down with every day. Um, I don't take all my fabrics, all my kit, all my projects with me on the when I go down because usually go down for breakfast and I go to the, the um, room, so I only bring maybe a couple of patterns. I uh, whips with me. Um, 
the first time I went, um, it was, I brought a duffel bag of pack of whips thinking I have all the time in the world, right? I, I know me better than that. And I've switched from tea to kombucha and water. Anyways, so what I find what works best for me is about five whips to take with me. Um, as you know, with retreats, there's a lot of do, 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 do. meeting, shopping, meeting, meeting new people, shopping, etc. Going out for lunch, going out for dinner, whatever. But I find five is the magic number. I am getting the retreat kit, so there'll be that as well. So the whips that I've chosen for this particular Stitch North are this in this bag. So the first one is actually the um, Holiday Countdown Sal. I started and didn't finish, right? So, and and it's already on a Q snap. <laughs> I didn't take it off the Q snap. I know you're supposed to, but anyways. So I'm taking the whole, the 2023 Modern Folk Embroidery Evertote Floroxy Floss Co. Holiday Countdown. So that's as far as I got. Um, I don't have an image. You've, you've, if you follow Modern Folk Embroidery and Evertote and all that, you'll know what it looks like at the end. There's a bajillion of pieces. So this is as far as I am. And for some reason I have all the pattern, patterns here. Don't know why. But I have, oh my son, I have, I have the full pattern printed out from day 25, the list. My son thought it would be funny to doodle on. <laughs> Anyways, so that's, I dropped it, sorry. Whip number one that is coming with me. I am keeping in the spirit of Christmas. I am taking Park Harper Bart's B. Mary All. You would have seen Caroline have finished hers, so I'm taking that. I really don't have much on this at all. I have the feast of part of the the festive hall. I've got. The feast, the ball. So I got the feast of the, yeah. Anyway, so that is another whip I'm taking with me that I would like to work on. That's whip two. Whip three is one of my favorites. Um, Tiny Modernist Mushroom Forest. So I'm taking that. I really should edge hem stitch the edges but oh well that's as far as I am on that so I'm really enjoying this piece so I'd like to work on it some more I might give these pieces a quick iron too and put them in the bag or I'll just iron them in the hotel room and I just hit myself with the thingy anyway so that is another whip I'm taking um this one is my blackbird designs Abercedian Abecedarian series, the Bountiful Harvest, number four. So I'm taking it. I don't have too far. This is one of the first pieces I picked up when I got back into cross stitching. I picked this up at Stitch It Central when they were in Ingersoll, Ontario. Now they're in London. So that's number four. And my fifth whip I'm taking along is the one I started at Jacob Palooza. Um, Tiochia in Grecia sampler from Jacob. And again, I really, really had a sad start 
because we had Jacob Palooza and then by the time I got home I hit the ground running with moving because we closed on this house. I got home the Monday and we closed on this house the Friday. So I basically came home and just hit the ground running with packing and purging and packing and purging and all that. Please don't make me do it again kind of stuff. So that is the five whips I am taking with me. I've learned to keep it down to five and then I can rotate because I'm the type of person I can make plans and then when it comes to sit down and go, okay, I was going to do whip A Friday morning, whip B Friday afternoon, whip C, you know, that kind of thing, or just focus on one whip all day, a specific whip, but I know when it comes to that point in time, I will be like, no, I don't feel like it. So as you saw, my <laughs> holiday countdown sal is still on a Q-snap. Um, I bring a slightly bigger one. I've learned two, two different sizes of Q-snaps. I don't want them too big. Um, I don't do well because some people bring like full floor stands almost and I'm just not quite into that. Um, my portable chargeable light daylight magnifier this is definitely coming this is my must have and it needs a good cleaning so I'll clean it moving we'll do that so this is this I love it um I picked it up online from the bay back in January early very early January 2024 when it was on there end of the year new year clearance you know how it is after boxing day and it's it's chargeable i got its own cord and then there are no outlets in the stitching space i have not had a problem yet with the charge on that lamp not holding um, I don't have it on the whole time. I mainly it's the magnifier. Sometimes it depends what I'm working on. Then I'll have the light on as well. But if it doesn't hold out, I do have, and this is something I just, when I do any kind of overseas international travel, I have this with me. It's just a portable battery charger that I've picked up at Amazon. Um, it's got different USB ports in it. So then I can plug the lamp into this. If I need the light and the charge is very low. Um, this holds an excellent charge for long periods of time. I purchased it just for international travel because sometimes, depending on the airport you're at or whatever, you're not necessarily able to charge your phone depending on number of outlets. Most airports are pretty good now, but not all. And even on the actual airplanes, I've had times where the charging port in my seat's not working for my phone. So... Then we have two of these, one for me, one for Dave. I love it, I probably should charge it. Let me see. Oh, it still has, it probably doesn't show because of the glare, but there is a charge. So, um, external battery pack. That is something and it's small and I always know where it is because like I said, when we do international travel, this goes into my carry-on with my electronics. And then I have this little pouch that is now covered in cat hair. Um, I love it. My Needle Crafts. Picked it up off of Etsy. It's perfect. So I have this. I picked this up of, of, at, off of Etsy years ago. It's just a little oops, needle roll. I didn't scissors it. I didn't close it. I do not remember the name of the vendor I purchased it from. I don't, I think she, I think it was just Putterant. She's out of Ottawa. I think she closed her Etsy shop. Um, it's just a really handy dandy needle roll. So I've got, these are like counting pin, oh, type of counting pin I got off of one, two, three stitch, which I like because I can put in here and then do count. And then I have this because um, yeah, it just helps me keep track of my counting and then I don't lose my needle because they're tied. So I got a couple of those and then I got some of these 
counting pins as well that I really love and it's good. These are really nice for picking um, when you have to frog along. And then this happens every time. Some extra needles. I have extra needles, of course, in the zipper pouch here. There's extra needles in there. Some more counting pins. And then for the finer, like the smaller needles, some of them, the eye is really small. Because I normally I use these threaders. But some of the like the 28 count, the 28 needles, the eye, this itty bitty thing hook here doesn't necessarily fit properly and especially when you pull the thread through. So I found this on one, two, three stitch. I have a couple of these. They're from My Big Toe Des Designs and it's a needle threader, but it's, oh my God, it's stuck, it's stuck. So it uses beads and then it's like a fishing wire and you can't, the camera's not gonna pick it up. Uh, it's so tiny, it's so fine. So it fits perfectly through like the 28 needle, number 28 needle for those finer fabrics. And then it pulls the thread without ripping the thread. Um, I have found Sometimes I've had it with the 28 and even the 26 needles that this little Duma Flicky is an excellent threader, sturdy. Um, but for those smaller needles, I, I find it's even um, severed the eye or the top. So the thread comes through. So I bring that with me. Um, a spoolie for when you're frogging and you wanna, I got this from somebody. I think it was a Jacob Palooza. I have a fabric gauge count thing in here, but I don't really use it at retreats. It's just good to have. This also is like cleans up loose threads. It's like a little kind of stick it through the holes to try and clean out. I mean, you know how you get the fibers. I do not remember what it's called. I am terrible. What else is in here? Another, oh, this corner gauge. I got this from Stitch North. 2022 and I love it because um I usually pick up new kit like I usually fully kit something and like the um Stitch North project right which is with Tiny Modernist this time so I always travel with my corner gauge just in case I want to start in the corner instead of the center it would ever float some more boat so that kind of all fits in this thing all right, Ta -da. and then this is for my orts. I used to have a glass jar, but I was worried about it breaking. And then when I was unpacking, I found these. These I used to use in scrapbooking when I hosted retreats and card making classes to, for people to put scraps in. So it's a nice metal one that'll be my orts, and then I can put pencils and other odds and ends in there that I just need to reach at as I mark off. Measuring tape. Sometimes you got to measure things. Oh, this should be in that little pouch too. Wax. This is a pumpkin. Again, it was a gift from somebody. Um, this is just a pencil case with pencils. Um, little ruler. Um, some different scissors and then my go-to scissors that I use all the time are these ones. These are my favorite. So these go so I kind of put them in there with pencil and that way I can, that's just the way I operate. And a wax. Waxer for my threads. And then a hair clip for my hair because sometimes I have hair that has a tendency to fall forward. So sometimes I just need to put it up because it's ticking me off. And then it looks like a hot mess like this, but it's not falling in my face when I'm looking down stitching. 
So that's what I have. And then another spoolie that's actually more heavy duty. That just doesn't really fit in anything. And that goes in this little oh, pouch. And my pencil case is still open. And I'm bringing um, an eraser and a pencil sharpener as well. So if I break my pencil point and anything like that, and a pen, usually a couple pens, sorry. That is usually what I have in my retreat kit. I try not to overpack or underpack. Um, so yeah, Q-snaps. I make sure that any whips I bring are small enough that they fit in a Q-snap. Um, anything that's big that needs scroll rods, I leave at home because then I'd rather work on it at home. And I always bring whips that I know where I'm at and I don't, they're not complicated because it's hard to concentrate when you're meeting new friends and talking to new friends. So that is my retreat kit. Um, I don't do the smallest exchange. I don't, oops, sorry. I don't feel confident. I am not a finisher. Um, I have some smalls on my roster that I want to do, and then maybe someday I will exper um, participate in a smalls exchange. But right now, no, I'm not confident in in my own skills and finishing a small and gifting it to someone, especially seeing some of the smalls at the different small exchanges. It's like there is some phenomenally talented women in the cross stitch world and my own insecurities come through and I don't think I could do as well as they can. So it's maybe someday. And I also, I'm not one to do gifts because I'm a poor planner. I know some people, they plan their gift table gifts well in advance. And me, it's just like, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> allergy season. What can I say? Anyways, I just pack for Stitch North. That's how far in advance I plan. And I only did it because, <coughs> there goes my throat again, because I wanted to do it for the video that I'm filming today. And normally it would be, I'm leaving Thursday, I'm doing this Wednesday. So I don't plan, <coughs> excuse me, that far ahead with my retreats. I just kind of throw everything in and then, okay, I'm good. Pack my suitcase. I usually pack a cooler bag of food for myself, for my snacks and lunches. <coughs> excuse me. So that is my retreat kit. And I've decided I am going to do a start tonight. Um, Dave is away on business. This is so funny. He just left this morning for Toronto for work. For He comes back Wednesday afternoon. I leave Thursday around lunchtime. It used to be that where we lived in Kitchen Waterloo was an hour to the retreat. So it wasn't a big deal. But now it's a bit further, so I'm leaving just after lunch, or around lunch. So I'm home alone tonight, me and the kitties, and I have decided I'm going to do a new start. Um, I don't know if I'll take this with me. Again, I'm somebody who changes her mind, so I... Pfft. Anyways, I'm going to start Primitive Hair Borealis box that I started, I, I got for Christmas from my kiddos, my Canadian kiddos. I have my UK kiddo and it's on. <clears throat> what is this? Aha! 30 Count Tempest from Primitive Hair. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Oh my lord. And then called forth DMC and Threadworks threads. So I will put these in. Um, Where's the thread works? Give me a second, I'll show you the thread works thread. Take a look at that, it's gorgeous. So I will iron the fabric. Looks like it needs, yeah, it needs, the edges need just a quick zigzag stitch on my machine. Individual baggies for the thread works. Um, which thread is it? doesn't say 
I don't know if it has a name or not. I don't know how, it's the first time you're working with thread work, so. <clears throat> it is stunning. So I'm gonna start this tonight. So that is a series of mini videos in one big one. And I have no idea how long this is, but knowing me, it's gonna be, here I thought it was gonna be a cute little short floss tube video, but now that I've made all these little mini videos, it's probably going to be a big one again. Anyways, I wish everyone well and happy stitching. I hope that you can find a little bit of joy in the small things in your life every single day. And I will see you, I'm not a scheduled person, but probably in a couple of weeks with a recap of my Stitch North experience. And uh, I might have a little bit of haul because it's Stitch North. <laughs> Anyways. Happy stitching, everyone. I wish you well, and till next time, take care.